Last Night in Soho is the latest film from director Edgar Wright, best known for directing Shaun of the Dead, Baby Driver, and one of my personal favourites, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Last Night in Soho follows Thomas and Mackenzie as Ellie Turner, a fashion student obsessed with the 1960s who moves to London from a small English town and is instantly overwhelmed by the city. Facing rampant harassment and misogyny from her fellow students and the men of the city, Ellie moves into an old English building run by an elderly lady where she begins having dreams of the 1960s and a mysterious woman called Sandy, played by Anya Taylor-Joy, who may have connections to a murder that occurred many years ago. I've enjoyed Edgar Wright's work for many years. He's a director whose films often invite repeat viewings, by including plenty of foreshadowing to events that would occur later on in a particular film. In addition to those films just being incredibly quotable and funny, I remember how often my friends and I would quote hot fuzz to each other back in high school. I think what makes Edgar Wright fairly fascinating as a filmmaker is in how he blends genres or throws creative curveballs in his movies, often with his third acts either landing for people or just come across as him throwing the narrative under a bus, where a film like The World's End will start with old friends going on a pub crawl and then shift into a fast-paced science fiction film. Last Night in Soho certainly won't be for everyone, and I'm sure you'll find people who favour different aspects of the film, where you've got the DNA of your classic English murder mystery, mixed with a psychological thriller that challenges the dangers of idolising certain time periods and people, while also acting as a solid feminist revenge tale in its own right, all and sprinkled with some of Edgar Wright's trademark British humour. There's a great deal of intrigue built up in the first couple of acts, which is all aided by Ellie being designed as an incredibly empathetic and fairly grounded protagonist, which you need in order to represents her as someone who is rarely heard by other people, and screenwriter Christy wilson Carnes does a fantastic job in making the audience understand what Ellie is experiencing emotionally throughout the film. Ellie is facing intense past traumas and the horrors of moving to the big city, making her time in London all the more terrifying, and the cast across the board really do need to be commended for their incredible work, with the late Diana Rigg in her final film appearance really standing out clearly loving every moment of her role in the film. The dream sequences featuring Anya Taylor-Joy and Matt Smith are absolutely stunning, with a particular unbroken dance sequence being an absolute highlight of the film, with Anya Taylor-Joy and Thomas and Mackenzie flawlessly being swapped out for one another in what can only be described as an incredible blend of cinematography, Texas switch staging and editing. And when you've got the incredible Chung Hoon Chung as your cinematographer, adored by film fans around the world for his work on Old Boy, then it's easy to see why the film looks as good as it does. There's a great deal of mystique surrounding the roles played by Anya Taylor-Joy and Matt Smith in the film. That keeps the film from ever exploring these characters too deeply until Edgar Wright is ready to unravel the secrets of the film. And for the most part, I really enjoyed how they were both eventually handled. The Sandy character really is wholly representative of the harassment and abuse women face on a daily basis, and will hopefully serve as a strong character to dissect in the years to come. As with all Edgar Wright films, there's plenty of things to keep an eye out for, with his signature attention to detail felt in every scene. I will admit that some of the visual foreshadowings in the film, such as mirrors and taxis, felt a little heavy-handed and gave away some of the suspense that had previously been built up. But for the most part, I do believe this will be a film that people dissect over the years to piece together clues, particularly with where musical cues are introduced, often used to reflect a character's state of mind or to help elaborate on certain moments. Last Night in Soho is a film that honours a lot of the urban myths and ghost stories that haunt London. And I'd imagine anyone who's read a lot of the old English thrillers or done any of the Jack the Ripper type tours around London will have a great time exploring the film, especially when the plot begins to unravel and amp up the intensity of its scares. I'm not going to call Edgar write a new horror master with Last Night in Soho. There are some scenes here that rely too heavily on jump scares for me personally, but he certainly knows how to build up effective moments with his soundtrack and visual style. Last Night in Soho ultimately works best as a cautionary tale, warning people to be careful what they wish for, especially when it comes to idolisation. It is a film that urges people to listen to women and bring credence to their stories of harassment. Last Night in Soho won't be for everyone, but I can only imagine that much like Scott Pilgrim, that this will be a film that gets discovered over the years, and it will be interesting to see what the reception is like in the near future. Last Night in Soho gets an 8 out of 10 from me. Guys, I hope you like this review. If you want to see more reviews just like this one, stay right here for your monofix. Bye guys.